with you. Okay. I'll be right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a nice verse for compassion. Mm. Okay, well, I'll just I'll just speak something. Let's go. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksun Narita Mayanata Sri Sri Guru Vena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutala Yishri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tina Mane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Nene Vrishisa Sunyavari Pastyat Yareya Satayana Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare <clears throat> So we have two suggestions. One is how to deal with praise and criticism and how to deal with uh, how to be, com what is compassion and we might say uh, compassion is the heart of bhakti. Bhakti is based on the particular mood. And that mood is to uh, uh, offer devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Compassion is a, is a mood of extending one's uh, desires for the benefit of others. Uh, to try to relieve the sufferings of others. And people in the material world are always under the influence of the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And therefore, they are always struggling. So those who try to relieve that struggle, they are known as compassionate. Compassion means that... Mm, a uh, devotee understands that material life is simply uh, a struggle, and there are many sufferings that come with material life, sufferings of the body, sufferings of the mind, sufferings of the, uh, the <clears throat> sufferings that come in different ways, sufferings by higher powers, sufferings caused by other living entities. So these are called clashes or sufferings. You can't stop these sufferings as you just can't stop the cold weather in the winter time. Whenever there's winter, there is cold weather. Wherever there is material life, there is suffering. But uh, the Bodhi thinks in terms of, uh, well, somehow or other, I've, I've received the good fortune of being connected with Krishna through devotional service has come by way of my spiritual master. Therefore, it's because he's compassionate, I have received the, the, a great gift, a great gift that will relieve my suffering and elevate my consciousness to the spiritual realm. So I should appreciate my uh, the gift by extending it out towards others. 
So um, it says, yeah, one who sees one who sees the sufferings of others as their own, and one who sees the happiness of others as their own, actually is in pure Krishna consciousness. So uh, we gave, we were speaking a little bit about this particular mood of suffering. What is there are different kinds of sufferings, and um, we see that people who suffer. Uh, on the mental platform are more uh, likely to to act drastically than those who suffer on the physical platform. Physical suffering is a kind of suffering. Uh, emotional and mental suffering is a kind of suffering that comes by way of simply uh, dealing with the different modes of material nature. That suffering is uh, uh, can be causes of suicide, just like statistics show that people who suffer mentally were more likely to commit suicide than people who suffer physically. Uh, mental and emotional pain is even greater, especially if that mental and emotional pain comes from someone who is near and dear to you then the suffering is even greater. If someone, if someone else causes you suffering who's not close to you or is a stranger, uh, there is some experience, but you can somehow deal with that and tolerate it. But when it comes to uh, sufferings that come by way of people that are dear to you, then that suffering is even greater. So uh, we see in the material world, Krishna says that Dukalaya Masasratam, Anitya Masubam, in two different places in the Bhagavad Gita, he, he emphasizes that, that this principle of material existence is fraught with suffering. No one can fulfill their desires here and no one can stay here. So uh, therefore, it's a place of suffering. And then there's physical suffering that comes by way of the sufferings that the body gives and then mental sufferings. Sufferings that come from other people which cause physical and mental suffering. And then we have uh, the sufferings that come with weather conditions, higher powers, uh, calamities such as, uh, you know, COVID virus. <laughs> These are all forms of uh, imposed suffering that comes from higher powers. And the reactions to sinful react activities, of course. But still, those who are in the arena of the material energy will also be affected by that in one form or another. But there's a greater form of suffering, and that is the separation from Krishna. As one performs devotional service, one starts to uh, experience my relationship with Krishna. And as that relationship starts to develop, one starts to feel the pain of separation from Krishna. That's a certain stage of experience in the process of bhakti. But one starts to regret having left Krishna and realizing how much they're suffering, being in the material world, being away from Krishna, not being with Krishna in the spiritual world. And that is the greatest suffering, and that's the suffering of the heart, the suffering of the soul. And therefore, those who have somehow or other become fortunate want to make others fortunate. Sometimes we call that preaching, but actual preaching means to show compassion to others. <laughs> This is the actual mood of uh, preaching. Preaching is not simply a philosophical dialogue on, on certain subject matters. It's a way to bring people to a higher stage of existence and relieve their suffering. Um, knowledge is elevating, knowledge is freeing. Knowledge allows one to understand I'm not this body. And therefore, the body and mind are actually going through different experiences. But me, the soul, I have nothing to do with the experiences that happen by way of my body and mind. So one can detach oneself from the sufferings that come 
from the material energy by realizing one is separate and different from the material energy. That knowledge is very valuable, and Krishna speaks that very clearly in the very, especially in the very, and throughout the Bhagavad Gita, and he summarizes it very nicely in the 18th chapter that um, the living entity is in a awkward position and has to undergo suffering despite the fact that it doesn't want to undergo suffering. It's automatic. So compassion, we see how people are compassionate towards people who are close to them. The mother will feel the suffering of the child when she sees the child is going through some difficulty and there, there's, there apparently appears to be no relief, the mother feels very heart-wrenching, uh, unhappy for the suffering and she'll try to relieve that suffering for her, for her child. We do that with dear and dear ones. But then again, all living entities are parts and parcels of Krishna. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, um, when you thus learn the truth, you'll know that all living beings are my parts and parcels that are in me and they're mine. He says, Aham bija padapita, I am the seed giving father of all living entities. So a father is very uh, inclined to show compassion and love towards his children. And therefore we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifests himself in that compassionate Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauda Triste Namaha. The Lord doesn't have to come to the material world and he can accomplish many of his uh, programs to rectify the material world without coming. But one thing he does come, he comes to uplift and give his association to his devotees, which is his, the essence of his compassionate nature. Because he, he knows that when the devotees get a chance to serve him directly and associate with him, they free themselves from all material suffering and experience transcendental happiness. So the Lord is very concerned about the sufferings of other living entities. Um, Krishna doesn't suffer because he is by nature joyful. He is Satchitananda Vigraha. His form is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. But as Srila Prabhupada points out, that just as a father feels uh, compassion and some suffering for the uh, suffering of the children within the family, so in the same way, Krishna experiences that some kind that he sees, he feels sorry that we are not happy. And he knows that becoming happy means to connect with him in devotional service. So he comes or he sends his pure representative to do the work. That is his compassionate nature. Therefore, we say that the spiritual master is actually the compassionate manifestation, or we say the word mercy manifestation of the Supreme Lord to uh, relieve the suffering of the material, the, of the material energy that comes by way of identifying with the material body and acting in a way that tries to find happiness through material activities. So Krishna is very kind. Krishna is very concerned. And those who develop that mood and feel for the suffering of others become inspired to relieve that. We see that there are people in the world who in a materialistic way see other people suffer and they want to relieve that suffering. Sometimes they start agencies and groups in order to do that. But sometimes in their own individual expressions, they work for the benefit of others. And this is material. So a devotee has that nature. Why? Because the devotee knows that I have been given something wonderful and I have been freed from my suffering. Now let me also try to share that with others and relieve the suffering of others. And that's the happiness that comes by way of devotional service. When a devotee experiences another person accepting the mercy and actually been benefiting from that acceptance, the devotee becomes very happy. So bhakti, yeah, compassion is really the heart of bhakti. 
and it inspires one to do more and more uh, programs or activities, both programs and activities, to reach out to the fallen conditioned souls. People suffer for different reasons, but as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, there's only one problem in the material world, and that is lack of Krishna consciousness. When one is Krishna consciousness conscious, they're no longer suffering. So bringing persons to Krishna consciousness is the highest welfare work that can be done. Why? Because it relates to the soul directly and includes the body and mind automatically. Whereas the programs that are done on the materialistic level, they, they usually direct it towards the mind or to the body, but they forget about the soul. And uh, because it is ephemeral or external, it doesn't last long. Mm -hmm. But once one becomes Krishna conscious, then there's no more suffering. Um, and the history is replete with great souls, not only preaching to the conditioned souls, but making great tremendous sacrifices. We have the example of Vasudev Dhatta Thakur who was a very dear and intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya. Vasudev Dhatta Thakur was compassion personified. He was really feeling for the sufferings of all living entities and he approached Lord Chaitanya and said, oh, my dear Lord, please give me all the reactions of all the sinful activities of all the living entities in this universe and let me suffer for whatever they have to suffer for and please take them back to the spiritual world. He was not just trying to explain how wonderful his feelings were, he was serious. He was really willing to suffer to whatever extent, just so others could be, could be happy. When Lord Chaitanya used to hear that, Lord Chaitanya would actually cry. He would say, Vasudev Datta, he said, well, I am Vasudev Datta's man. Vasudev Datta owns me. He can sell me any place, anywhere. I am, the process, I am the property of Vasudev Datta. Because we understand Lord Chaitanya has come to relieve the suffering of the conditioned souls through the process of Sri Harinam Sankirtan and pure devotional service. So when when Vasudev Dasta was speaking like that, Lord Chaitanya was overwhelmed with emotion and just glorified Vasudev Dant. But then he said to Vasudev Dant, even if we give all the living entities freedom from all sinful reactions and bring them back to the spiritual world, then the universe will again fill up with another set of living entities. So, um, and, but Lord Chaitanya did take everyone back at that time and to fulfill the desire of Vasudev Dutt, and at the same time did not allow Vasudev Dutt to suffer. He wanted to, to please his pure devotee, who simply was suffering because he was seeing other, other people suffering. So compassion is that mood which inspires one to help relieve the sufferings of other, and the greatest suffering is uh, one is thinking I can I can become happy through material arrangements, through material activities. So giving knowledge is one of the greatest forms of compassion. Uh, you can you can show compassion in different ways, but when you give knowledge and people accept that knowledge, then they have the tools to, to relieve themselves of all suffering. It's not just something that is done and then again reappears but in it actually has lasting effect when you give people the knowledge that they are not this body and they are spirit soul part and parcel of krishna and their happiness is to engage in devotional service so this is a little bit about um, compassion it's um, it's very deep. Um, 
just like now we're seeing people suffering are all around us. And devotees are being moved by that suffering and want to do something to relieve it. Uh, no one likes to suffer and no one wants anyone else to suffer. Only a hard-hearted, cruel, insensitive person finds pleasure and in causing other people to suffer. There's a class of people like that. They are called demons. They enjoy when other people suffer. It's, the devotees can't even imagine that kind of mentality because it's so far removed from a devotee's natural tendency to be kind towards all living entities. That is the nature of a Vaishnava. The kindness is reflected by that they'll do whatever they can to uh, somehow or other show uh, compassion, concern uh, for other living entities. By giving them Krishna consciousness, we also distribute prasadam. We also, we have our Bhaktivedanta hospital in Mumbai, where we're doing work, uh, giving people medical care at the same time, giving them the spiritual association. That particular hospital is one of the one of the great projects in ISKCON, wherein doctors have gotten together and provided a low cost hospital and people come there and they immediately, uh, there is Prabhupada's lectures that come into everyone's room through a, uh, through a speaker. And you can hear Prabhupada's bhajans 24 hours a day. Uh, the staff breaks every once in a while, they all come together and everyone does a group prayer in the middle of the floor and on the first floor of the hospital, that's done twice a day. Someone also gives a short lecture. So the hospital is a spiritual hospital and it takes care of material uh, illnesses at the same time. So the idea was to bring people in, show, can help them with their physical in the, but give them the real medicine. They may neche asadi maya asi vadalagi. Harinam Maha Mantra, Lao Tumi Magi, the real medicine is the chanting of the holy names of the Lord and the opportunity to engage in devotional service. So that is compassion, that is preaching, that is that is the quality of a real devotee. Devotee is not happy simply by their own spiritual advancement. They are looking for opportunities to assist others in making progress in devotional service. Therefore, you see, devotees are always making programs and plans to reach the conditioned souls with this message of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so we can stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, uh, for a very wonderful class on compassion. Um, I really like this topic very much because uh, um, this is the main essence of our bhakti. Um, as you said, devotees are full of compassion. That's why um, new people come to Krishna consciousness. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Yeah. This is um, this is the main topic. Um, dear devotees, if you have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, you can go ahead, please. Thank you. Shri Devi Mataji, you want to go ahead? Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Srimati. Yes, ma'am. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you again for a truly wonderful lecture. Um, importance of compassion, which is really the heart of bhakti, and why the devotee is always thinking of ways and means to give Krishna consciousness to others. In the course of the lecture, Guru Maharaj, you said at one point that this material world no one can fulfill their desires here and no one can stay here permanently. Now, I understand no one can stay here permanently, 
But don't we see people fulfilling their desires all the time? I want to go to McDonald's and eat. I want to go to Disneyland. I want to go buy a house. I want to do this. I want to do that. And they go on and they do it, isn't it? No, material desires lead to more material desires. Therefore, one is always desiring. There's no fulfillment. Hmm. Fulfillment means you're satisfied, you're peaceful, you're happy within. Hmm. But material desires just extend themselves out to wanting to for more material desires. No one can be happy by fulfilling material desires. It's not possible. You can't fulfill material desires because hmm. they just lead to more desires, that's all. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. I got that now. Okay. Thank you. I was a little puzzled by that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Bro. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's the nature of material life. Um, devotees, any more questions? Uh, Guru Maharaj, I was thinking like um, when I was uh, recently, uh, I, I got a chance to talk about uh, impersonalism, but uh, it's a very huge topic and it's a very big topic. I don't know much about it, but I, uh, I did some research in Bhagavad Gita and I spoke. So at that time I was thinking like, um, so these impersonalists, they don't have, uh, they don't think about uh, that they don't understand that uh, Lord has a form. So they always think about uh, Brahman realization. So how can they be compassion? So I, I figured out that they will not have any compassion towards anybody. Is that right, Kurmaraj, what I thought? Well, an impersonalist means someone who deals with the... Mm -hmm the energy of the Lord, not the Lord himself. Yeah. Okay. And therefore they are, they're impersonalists. They also carry that attitude towards relationships in this material world. That's why Prabhupada in the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, first chapter, explains how the material, the impersonalists they go back to material activities because there's no satisfaction and there's no relationships that develop in impersonalism. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're, they are always looking for happiness in different ways, but not, not through relationships because they're not, they don't, they think personal relationships are Maya. Yes, good minute. So until we uh, we find a relationship or connection, um, we can't be uh, compassionate or kind enough. Uh, uh, I, I feel that uh, your heart makes you strong, uh, hard uh, if you don't have compassion. Um, right. And also if you don't feel that... Uh, um, Krishna consciousness, um, any, um, you don't have any Krishna consciousness or you don't uh, believe um, in the Lord himself, then people, I don't know how to say, but uh, I feel that impersonalists are very hard-hearted. <laughs> yeah, I that's true. That's why they're never happy. Mm -hmm. You can see that they, ne they never show happiness. They're always performing some austerities or doing something else. They're generally not happy. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, well, well, there was something I was going to say. Uh, no, then they come back to material activities and look for relationships based on that on that level because they can't find it. Everything starts with Krishna. When you have a relationship with Krishna, then you have a relationship with others. If you don't have a relationship with other with Krishna, you can't have a natural and normal relationship with anybody, because all of it's all based on Krishna, because he is the source and the root of everything. 
So those who love Krishna love others. Mm. Those who serve Krishna want to serve others by giving them Krishna also. Krishna is, is the foundation for developing relationships. Yes, Kovash. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, our relationships are selfish. Therefore, they're always mixed with our personal interests. Husband and wife come together, but each one wants to satisfy their own desires in that relationship. And that's why things break apart so easy. But if you have Krishna in the seven center and religious principles in the center, then the relationship develops naturally because it's not about any one person, it's about Krishna and our relationship with Krishna. And because we are connected with Krishna, we can feel that connection with all other living entities. But if there's no devotional service, then, then it's all, it's all that whatever I, I develop relationships to get something, that's all material. The purpose of relationship is to exchange uh, loving feelings. And loving feelings are, are manifested through uh, favorable service. That's good, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much, good Maharaj. Okay. David Underpandit has his hand up. Yes, good Maharaj. Um, Prabhuji, you want to ask a question or shall I, shall I read it out on the chat? Uh, please read if you can. Thank you. Sure. Maharaj, uh, Prabhuji is asking, um, you mentioned that Krishna did not have to come to this material world. Uh, in Srimad uh, Bhagavatam 2.9.24, Vishnu says to Brahma, I create this cosmos by such penance, I maintain it by the same energy, and I withdraw it by all, the, all by the same energy. Therefore, the potency is penance only. Also in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 2.9.23, he says, such penance is my heart and soul, and therefore penance and I are non-different. Could you elaborate a little what is penance for Krishna? Well, I have to see what Krishna is speaking about in the broader sense. That you know, What is that series of verses that is connected with that? 2.9.23. Um, you have to see the verses that you have to see the verses before then. Mm -hmm. Shall I open Guru Maharaj? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, can, just to take it out of context doesn't give us give a clear understanding. Two point nine point. Go to two point nine point twenty and see what Krishna is saying. Okay, it's good Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Okay. O Brahma, impregnated with the Vedas, I am very much pleased with your long accumulated penance, with the desire for creation. Hardly am I pleased with the pseudo mystics. Okay, go on to the next verse. I am pleased with your penances. Mm -hmm. I wish you all good luck. You may ask for me any better. You may know that the other, other result is to, is to see me by realization. Okay, so Krishna is talking about penance in general. The highest perfectional ingenuity is the personal perception of my abodes. And this has been possible because of your submissive attitude in the performance of severe penance according to my order. Well, this is all about creation and Lord Brahma's austerity that he, also, you may know that for me that it is I who first ordered you to undergo penance when you were perplexed and you do such penance as my heart and soul, therefore penance and I are not different. In the sense that Krishna is talking about not his own penance, but that, that devotional service that is based on undergoing penance to please the Christian, 
to the Supreme Lord. That penance is the heart and soul of the, of the Lord. And here Prabhupada gives us the, the penance by which one can see the person of Godhead face to face is understood as devotional service to Lord and nothing else because only by discharging devotional service and transcendental love can one approach the Lord. Such penance is the internal potency of the Lord and is non different from him. So the Prabhupada is aligning devotional service with penance. So the internal energy of the Lord is bhakti. Such acts of internal potency are exhibited by non-attachment from material enjoyment. Yeah, so this he's talking about renunciation that le leads to pure devotional service, which is the heart of the, of the Lord. So in order to uh, reach the stage of devotional service, one has to undergo penance and austerities. Uh, and Brahma did that in order to fulfill the desire of the Lord in order to receive the mercy that he needed and, and the knowledge he needed and the, and the empowerment he needed in order to perform his great service as creating the material uh, cosmos in terms of the different bodies of the living entities. So it's not that the Lord is undergoing penance. It says that the that penance which is offered to him in devotion, that is his heart and soul. What penance does the Lord have to undergo? When he comes to the world of the world as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he accepts the sannyasa of her life and then accepts penances on, on austerities in that, in that realm. But He's playing the part of an ordinary conditions. I mean, as as a playing the part of a devotee in that in that role, but the Lord Himself has no penance to under undergo. Okay. Is it okay, Prabhuji? Or uh, you have further any more questions? Please let us know. I'm sorry, but I don't understand uh, what is austerity for Krishna uh, because he is the supreme enjoyer. Uh, He's the, he, the, he does, yeah, he, he doesn't perform any austerities. There's no need for him to perform austerities. He's, he's just saying that that austerity performed for devotional service to please him, that is non different than him. That's all. That's all he's saying. Is austerity his uh, energy? He doesn't perform penances and austerities. He's a supreme enjoyer. And what what does he have to renounce? What does he have to give up? <laughs> uh, why does he was why he said that uh, austerity is his soul? He's talking about our austerity. Uh, about our austerity. Yes. That, that's offered to him in devotion. That count, that that attracts his heart. Thank you. Rama did that. Rama performed great austerities in order to get empowerment to create. That's what the Lord is referring to. Brahma's great penances and austerity. It's clear. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. You have to read the whole series of verses and, to, and then you can see the connection. It's all about Lord Brahma. Thank you very much. Um, Krishna Premi Mataji, you have raised your hand. You want to ask? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance. It's all glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you for uh, your class. So you said about suffering, uh, about sufferings in material world, and then you said that um, there is a suffering in a separation for Krishna. And it seems for me that um, now we suffer, but then we will suffer even more. <laughs> so 
could you please explain about this spiritual suffering a little bit um because um, um for me it does, doesn't sound um like some inspiration <laughs> somehow no it comes by way of one's the progress in devotional service one starts to feel the separation of the lord as one progresses in devotional service one is more and more eager to associate with and serve the lord and in that mood the, the pain of suffering causes one great great unhappiness but that's that unhappiness is spiritual it's not material When you love someone or you're experiencing the pain and that love, when one is separated from that object of love, one feels unhappy. In the spiritual sense, that, that brings about greater longing to want to be with that person. So this uh, spiritual suffering, it's like, uh, also enjoyable it's, it's, it helps us yeah yeah it's not it's not simply suffering it's not material suffering at all it's the pain of love that's all for now it's difficult to understand how it is <laughs> well you can you could do you can relate that on a material level too when you love someone and you're separated from that person you want to be with them and in that in that desire to be with them, there is this pain of, of separation. So that's the same thing towards Krishna. When it's towards Krishna, it brings about the association of Krishna through that mood of separation. That is, that is, <laughs> that is bhakti. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Love of God is not always so sweet. It's sweet in essence, but it has some, some what we say, uh, sharp pains to it. Just like it's described in the nectar of, I'm sorry, in Chaitanya and Charitarita, that if you were to put five ingredients together, I think the ingredients are um, saffron, and rose water, and uh, many other very uh, attractive and very pleasant substances. But then if you add some black pepper to it, you get a little bit of the sharpness. So love of God is like that. <clears throat> the, pain of the pain of separation. Unless we have some connection with Krishna, we can't feel separate from Krishna. It's like you, okay. you love your child. And so say your, uh, say your mother comes along and says, Krishna Premi, uh, I wanna take the child back to, um, uh, uh, What's that place you from? Belarus. Belarus, yeah. I wanted, and I want the child to be with me. I'm the grandmother. I want her to be with me for, I mean, for a little while. And then she takes it, and you're without your child. And you're thinking, wow, well, I'm really missing my child. I really want to be with my child. The love of the mother just extends itself saying i can't wait to get to the child comes back and then when the child comes back there's such happiness that it explodes into something wonderful so that's the same thing with krishna we have an unlimited deep unfathomable and never changing always increasing uh, mood of love for krishna it's there but we're covered we don't feel it but somehow we get a little bit of advancement. We get the, the coverings come and we start to feel that separation. Oh, my dear Lord, what am I doing in this material world? I'm wasting my time. 
I'm just, I'm so far away from you. So that, that feeling is natural. It seems so, uh, that this stage is such higher stage. But you can understand it through a material yeah. example. I gave, I gave you the material example, but it's, mm -hmm. it's there. Try to understand it through the example I gave you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's clear. So, but, um, yeah, but I understood that the, the problem, what uh, I had in the beginning in my mind, you know, I'm, I was thinking it's like material suffering, this uh, love of Krishna. And it's no, enough suffering no. here in material world. No, no, so it's not like that. No, there's a, there's a type of joy that comes with that kind of suffering. Mm -hmm. Okay. A joy that can't, can't, cannot be explained. It's... it's the mixture of happiness and distress, but both are spiritual. Um, Guru Maharaj, um, we have a question on chat. Uh, Namrita Mataji, you want to ask, unmute yourself or shall I read it? Okay. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, so, my question is uh, we understand that uh, you told by, uh, the, uh, by explaining the compassion, how do we have to be compassionate? But how should we understand we should not be over compassionate? Like example, uh, there are many communities in the world who are literally uh, being very cruel to other human beings. How do we understand to deal with such people? There are many communities in the world that do what? Uh, they're literally being uh, cruel, they're like being inhuman to other human beings. Yeah, that's 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 demoniac. That's the nature of the demons. Harshness, cruelty, violence. It's all based on lust, anger, greed, envy. Because they are honeycombed with these different bad qualities, they express those things towards others and they cause suffering to others. How do we understand, Maharaj, that we should be compassionate to such people or we should not be compassionate to such people and avoid them? Um, well, for the demoniac, it's a mention you should completely avoid them. You should deal with the innocent and not so much demoniac cannot be changed. They should be avoided. That's mentioned the, on the second class platform of devotional service, Madhyamam Adhikari, then there are four stages. One, to give your love to Krishna. Two, to make friends with the devotees. Three, to uh, show compassion to the innocent. Four, to avoid carefully the, the atheistic non-devotees. Follow those four principles and then you are nicely situated on the second class platform, which is a very high platform. First class platform, is, a third class platform is, I'm simply interested in my own spiritual growth, that's all. Second class platform is mentioned by these four principles and the first class platform is the Uddhama Adhikariya who is um, completely in love with Krishna and sees no one as uh, 
sees everyone as a devotee of the Lord. That you cannot imitate. Mm -hmm. That's the highest platform. That's the platform of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of Madhavendra Puri, as, or Srimati Radharani. So we should function on the second class platform, follow those four principles. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Devotees, any more questions or comments? Um, Guru Maharaj, um, I have a question, um, Guru Maharaj, if you have time. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, not uh, this topic. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I was listening to your lecture this morning uh, where you, uh, in the temple um, Bhagavatam class, uh, you gave a class uh, in Lubjana temple. So in that, you were talking about association of devotees. Um, so uh, I was thinking like, um, so can we choose the association of devotees, Guru Maharaj? Like, uh, suppose in a particular area, we have some devotees and we always um, seek um, uh, association whom we are near to or uh, close by, not going too much far. But uh, sometimes um, um, due to some circumstances or something or other happening and we don't like that association and uh, so I want we want to move out um, but we can't go so like these circumstances can we choose our association like where we feel comfortable like that yeah uh, yeah well, if you, but if you find yourself in another association you should also try to try to benefit from that association try to take advantage of that try to be in the mood of service you may not always be able to choose, but if you can choose, that is that is fine. Yeah, one should one should choose their association. That's nice, but not based on sense gratification, but based on inspiration yeah. in devotional service. It's good, Maharaj. Um, because I feel like suppose uh, if in any association we don't feel good, uh, or uh, then we may commit offenses or Vaishnava prad um, uh, unintentionally. And also, uh, it's um, it's very um, not good for our bhakti life. Also, so instead yeah. of that, um, to avoid that situation, I just I'm, I'm thinking in that direction. Like, can we change the association so that uh, we can be more yeah. uh, positive thinking? Yeah. That, that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But we should learn to be humble. Mm -hmm. That way, we uh, we can be in any association. If we're humble, we can be in any association and, and not feel threatened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good night. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Did you, you listen to my class live today? Uh, no, Guru Maharaj, recording. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Send me the record. Yeah, send sure. me that recording. I failed to record it today. If you could send it to me. Sure, good night. I'll send. Thank you. Thank I you. need to post it on my on my conference on the website like that. Sure, good night. Or if you want to send it to uh, to my website, that's even better. Um, I don't know, good night, how to do it. Uh, maybe I can send it to someone who can do it. Yeah. Yeah, send it to me and I'll just send it off. Sure, good night. So, Kurmaraj, I think uh, there are no more questions and we are um, at the hour now. So. Okay, yeah, we just hit the, the hour mark. Okay, so tomorrow is Thursday and tomorrow we will go with uh, Charlotte. The verse is... Uh, it's 5.13.31, Gurmaraj. They they told me thirty. You have thirty one. I have thirty. Oh. Uh, thirty they covered today, Guru Maharaj, uh, but I don't know why. Um, it's... Oh, okay. Okay, they, she sent me thirty, but okay, thirty one. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, okay, 
All right, so that's 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 tomorrow at um at 12 20 uk time uh, 12 20 pm uk time and 7 right. Eastern. Yeah, 12 20 uk time. Hmm. okay thank you very thank much you. thank you so much for your time thank you thank you thank you for all the devotees for participating in the discussion today thank you thank you all devotees Shri Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you. Brinda.